Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to be dissecting the authentication layer of an ASP.NET Core application. The application that I have in this sample is running on .NET 7. Not much has changed since I think .NET Core 1, .NET Core 2.1 was the biggest change and then a couple of middleware changes. So if you know some stuff, most of it should apply. If you don't know anything, this video will be perfect for you. And if you understand the claims principle, but perhaps you don't understand the authentication handler or the middleware and how it all ties together, this video is going to be good for you as well. Because what we're going to do is take a look at the basics like the claims principle, the claims, how to sign in, and then how do we pick up a cookie to authenticate our current session. We will essentially go through the process of rebuilding what Microsoft has built for us. When you create an empty application, this is what you're greeted with. And this is where we will start. We will make a target for ourselves to get a username out of our user. We will not return hello world here. We will just return something like Anton. That is going to be my username. We're not going to do much work here just yet. I will copy this method and paste it though, because before we can even get a username, we need to be signed in. So first order of business is about issuing a cookie. This is where we're going to log in. Here we will return OK that logging in has gone successfully. And logging in looks something like this. We need our HTTP context. And if you don't know what an HTTP context is, essentially when you make an HTTP request, all the request headers, the URL, any information, all of that is shoved into the HTTP context from the beginning to the end of the response where you see the response in the browser. That is the HTTP context, the lifetime of it throughout handling of that request. All the information is contained here. And what we're after is the response that we're about to deal out. We are interested in the headers that they have. And then we're interested in the set cookie header. This way, set cookie. We will then create a new string value. And this will be my authentication cookie which is going to contain some kind of payload. This can be a user ID, this can be a username. I'm going to put my username in here, USR, and then the username of Anton. Our basic functionality for dealing out an authentication cookie is pretty much done. Let's open up the terminal and run the application. .NET watch, no hot reload. Now that the application is running, let's open developer tools. I'll open the network tab and we are going to log in. This is the start of the request. So we append request headers and then in the response headers, we have set cookie auth and username of Anton. If we then go into application, we have the payload stored under this key. And if we make further requests, this cookie will be appended automatically. If I reload login on this request, we will see that cookie is appended on the first one when we didn't have the cookie, the cookie is nowhere to be found. And if we go to the username endpoint, we're going to see Anton here, and we're currently appending the cookie. So where is it? Request header, cookie. There it is. All we have to do now on our backend is extract this information about me, the user, and return it. Okay. Again, we will need an HTTP context. On the HTTP context, we will go to the request because it's a request header. Here we'll have headers and we will have the cookie header. We will say cookie. I think this one is a little bit easier to reach this way. We will then look for our first cookie that starts with our cookie name and an equals. This is going to be the auth cookie to maybe make this pro debugging process a little bit easier. First of all, what we'll do is we'll just return from the endpoint what we have here. Hopefully it will be the cookie, the whole cookie. Now I'll just split it by equals and then by colons to extract the data that I want. Auth cookie split by equals. I'll grab the last. This is going to be my payload and then payload split by colon. I'm going to have parts. First, I'm going to have a key in my parts. This is going to be the first part. And then I'm going to have the value. This is going to be the second part. And if I return the value from here, I will refresh the page. And there we have it, Anton. 
success. Um, I don't know what it was, like five minutes or so, we have implemented an authentication layer. I'm joking, you cannot use this for authentication. There are a couple of security reasons like uh, you are not ensuring that only your server is capable of creating this and then also your server is capable of validating this. So we need a little bit of security around this cookie, okay? This is where Microsoft has got you covered. Uh, they have created a data protection API, which you can surface by builder service add data protection. This will make an iData protection provider interface available to you, which you can use for encryption and decryption. And it's relevant, I'm mentioning it here, because the cookie authentication that is used inside is actually using this interface. Before we set the cookie, let's service, uh, service, let's surface our data protection provider. I, I'll just call it IDP, big D there, okay. And then we're gonna import it. With IDP, you have to create a protector. We are creating an auth cookie. You're kind of saying create protector for what scenario are you gonna use this protector? This is going to be a protector. And then we're looking at the payload here, which we wanna protect, interpolated string, curly braces, protect, protect. And then we stick a string that we wanna protect. Pretty much end of the story. Now that when we're gonna come back around to the other side, we wanna unprotect, okay? Let's place this here, resurface the protector and unprotect the payload. This payload that we're gonna have here, this is going to be the protected payload. And then we wanna just have the payload. We'll go to the protector, unprotect the protected payload, and there we have it. We're gonna end up at the same scenario. Let's first re-log in. Look at that, whoa. Nobody will be able to guess that. All right, oh, uh, about endpoint, a uh, user, uh, username, if I can spell correctly. And here we see Anton. So we're encrypting and decrypting cookies. Let's take a look at the solution and let's talk about it a little bit. What are the different parts? What is happening here? We're dealing out, we're creating an authentication session, and then we're recognizing an authentication session. These are two main mechanisms that belong in an authentication solution. There can be many authentication solutions. Sign in as Google, sign in as Facebook, cookie authentication, token authentication, right? And so on and so forth. And however many examples you're gonna have in the future. You're then also gonna have many, many endpoints. If you wanna swap out the way that you sign in, do you want to go and find your login endpoint and then change the logic in there? Or do you wanna have a service that you can distribute bet between many, many applications and not have to re-implement that same login endpoint across all of those applications? That would be nice, wouldn't it? And then for picking up your authentication session, do you want to put this logic on every single endpoint? What if you want to pick up a different cookie for a different endpoint? Hopefully you can see a couple of things here that you can clean up. Let's take those steps, we will clean this up, and we will clean this up the way that Microsoft uh, would uh, attempt to do it. Again, we'll first start with the login where we're gonna say, look, we wanna have a service that is gonna be performing the login logic because the way that this cookie is being dealt out, the protection, the unprotection, the having uh, the, to supply the IDA data protection service. We're not handling a bunch of stuff. There can be configuration. Do we want it to be a same site cookie? Should we be persistent? There is tons and tons of things that we're not handling. Please understand that the dealing out the cookie, creating an authentication session, and then recognizing that authentication session, they're just two money shots. There is a bunch of edge cases that you need to handle around them, security, browser limitations, tons of them, okay? This is, again, just my attempt to try, try to outline these components in your head. So an authentication service, we will create it, public class auth service. We'll create a constructor where we will accept an IDP, place it over here. And then we're also accept an HTTP context accessor. This is going to be an accessor. We'll create a field. If you're not familiar with this interface, basically as the request is happening, if you're service, uh, surfacing some kind uh, 
service that you have created and you want to access the HTTP context, this is a well-defined interface through which you access the HTTP context. We then have public void or task. Uh, let's keep this as at void, but understand that this can be asynchronous. We have sign in. We will then just take this logic that we have here. IDP is replaced with IDP. Context is replaced with accessor, HTTP context. And there we have it. All we have to do now is inject this service auth and call sign in. And we will be signed in. IDP, we will no longer need it. And that's pretty much a really good story there, right? We can uh, expose this service as a package and, uh, you know, you just import a package, register it and put it, drop it into your application. And now you have authentication enabled and you can put it on any endpoint that you like. Uh, let's not have singleton. Let's actually add uh, add scoped because it's getting the what's called uh, the IHTTP context accessor service. But that's what's happening there. Now for recognition of authentication. Again, you don't want to be placing it on every individual endpoint. When a request starts and for the lifetime of the HTTP request, it actually goes through middleware. Another backbone of the ASP.NET Core framework right? You have services and middleware. Before arriving at some kind of handler or some kind of action, I want to check if there is an authentication cookie and if there is, create some kind of object that represents a user. We're going to do super simple middleware. We're just going to put it in place. We'll put use over here. First parameter is the HTTP context and the next parameter is called next or it's rather the delegate which is going to execute the next piece of middleware. Finally, the last piece of middleware is going to trigger one of these handlers. If you are not exactly sure how we would reach one of these handlers, we can now take all of this logic, cut it out, place it over here. And then we have IDP, which we want to surface here. The way that you can surface services is through the context. Uh, you have request services. You can call get service, but get required service is better. The only difference between them is that get required service is going to get you a non nullable because the required keyword basically indicates this service should be registered. This will be IDP for us, var IDP equals. And now we somehow want this middleware to reach in into this map get. I am not the creator of the framework. I could extend the HTTP context or there is actually a bag on the HTTP context, an item bag. I'm just going to reuse the existing infrastructure there. Just understand that here we're loading the cookie and we just want to pass on whatever data we found here to this handler. For this reason, on the context, there is a user, which is a claims principle. I will omit this from here for now. And we're just going to take a, the, a look at the user before anything is appended or anything like that. We'll refresh the username. And once the application starts up again, hopefully I don't have any errors. I do not able to, uh, of course, if you need to use IHTTP context accessor, you need to add HTTP context accessor as a service. So that should be good. Let's see if the application starts. Looks like it is. We'll refresh. And there is the current user. It's pretty much empty. I'm a little bit surprised that it's not null, but it has some kind of a default identity in it. I'm not actually sure what it is, but we can leave it. I don't think it's impacting us that much. In our authentication middleware that we have just created, let's go ahead and instantiate a new claims principle. A claims principle is essentially just this bag, an object that carries information about who you are as a user. Who you are as a user, because we humans, we look at each other and we see, ah, oh, yeah, you got this face, you look like that, like this, uh, etc. Computers, they need numbers. So generally, all information about yourself will be something like email value, whatever email you have. What is your age? Value. What is your name? value, so on and so forth. How many eyes? Two. How many years? Two. How many legs? Three. It's, you know, I don't know, something like that. So you have a claims principle and then the claims principle in order to construct it, you have to have an identity, a new claims 
identity and then you have the individual claims when i was listing your properties like what's your name what's your age that's what a list of claims are it's just a bunch of keyword value pairs so a list of claims will fill it up with a actually a new claim that is going to contain a key and a value all we have to do now is take the claims put them inside the identity take the identity and put it inside the claims principle claims identity is a way to identify you the government may give you a passport that's an identity it's gonna have some claims one of those claims is gonna be the passport id another may be a driving license identity that is gonna have a unique claim like the driving license number or something like that your claims principle you can have all of these documents that describe you and it's just a bag that you are capable of having across all of your requests and actually using it and on this claims principle there is a find first function which extracts a claim based on its type one of our claims types is US, USR, USR, yep. And this is the way that we're gonna get the user. So when I refresh this, I'm gonna get obviously an object cycle because claim contains a lot of things that it shouldn't contain for, you know, a key value store. So we're gonna use the toString method to basically get its final and uh, the representation that it should have or actually just output its value i have it let's refresh and there we have it we can see the claim value coming back around to the code let's drop the terminal down and now is the time to understand what are the equivalent implementations that microsoft has given you what are the tools in asp.net core the auth service they have their own implementation and more and then they also have their authentication middleware, which you have probably used, which is just use authentication, which kind of does the same. Let's comment these out and we'll find their equivalents. We will also be looking at some uh, under the hood code to see how these things tie up. Instead of registering our auth service with the builder services, and by the way, we no longer need to register these as well because they all get registered under the hood. We add authentication and we're going to be adding cookie. And by the way, this is what I'm specifying here is the equivalent of, is it the government identifying me? Is it the driving agency? Is it the job center, etc. This is an authentication schema. It's kind of who is authenticating you. In this case, we are going to be adding a cookie. This is just the default schema. The cookie over here is responsible for a couple of parts because you can add JWT bear, you can add auth, you can add Google, you can add Facebook. Cookie mainly is responsible for loading up the cookie and writing back the cookie, validating it, making sure that it's in correct format, splitting it if it has to, if it's too big, all that stuff. That's what this is responsible for. That's the services it loads. Some of those services are surfaced in your middleware you then have the actual middleware which is use authentication middleware this is the equivalent of this the authentication service actually you don't see it but it is there and it is reached through your http context i'll comment this out and we're going to call ctx sign in async we're going to await here and when you do sign in you have to sign in under a schema, ours was cookie, and you have to create a new claims principle. We are going to lift this code over here and recreate the claims principle. And by the way, nothing is stopping us from accepting a claims principle as a parameter in this function. In fact, that would be the smart thing to do in order to then serialize that into a cookie. We'll have this claims principle. We don't want to set it to the context. This will be our user record that we want to store when we create a claims identity this is where i mentioned that it needs to be either issued issued by the government by the driving agency this is where we also have to specify the schema and i can't remember okay it actually goes after you know these parameters are all over the place but anyway i'm creating a cookie with a user which is going to contain a user claim and my name of anton 
If you're wondering where the database with the login and the password sits, it sits right before you attempt to do this. Your user record, you load it up, you map it to a claims principle, and then you sign in with it. Let's make this asynchronous. This is now the logic for dealing out the cookie. The authentication service, as I said, it is present. However, you don't see it. And it hides underneath sign in async. We're going to open it up. And that you can do this if you have writer or resharper. We're going to follow the method a little bit. And if you're a complete beginner, you may struggle a little bit, but hold on. Okay. Get authentication service. It's going to get service. I authentication service. On that authentication service, I'm going to go back to sign in async. We call the sign in async function. Okay. It's on the I authentication service. We will go to the implementation and this is what it's going to look like. When the authentication service gets instantiated, a bunch of parameters get set on it. Mainly the things that we can, we are concerned about is the handlers provider over here. I authentication handler providers, and it gets the handler again. The handler is the additional part which we didn't write, which basically says currently we're working with cookies. Otherwise, we may be working with tokens. This is where Microsoft has gone, uh, gone ahead and said this part over here, this may happen differently. We're going to shift this logic into a handler. And then this bit is also shifted into a handler. I can actually bring up both of these parts. I think it will be a little bit more confusing, but just so you understand that in both of these situations, we are surfacing handlers, or again, we're trying to use the I authentication service over here to authenticate. This is inside the middleware. I'm going to close this now, and I'm going to close this middleware. We're going to come back to the authentication service. We have the handler, and then we sign in with it. In the middleware, as you've seen, we get the handler, and we can take a little bit of a closer look at it, actually. Reopening the middleware. If we have the handlers here, we just handle the request async and then internally that will append the claims principle to the context here. The authentication service again underneath the hood here returns a claims principle and it's just doing exactly what we're doing in our example where we're just setting the user context. Okay. The last piece of the puzzle is really about yay much of the logic where yeah, it's just been moved to a handler. This handler is registered when you add a particular authentication method. In our case, it's add cookie. If again, we travel down the registration chain, this is going to be cookie authentication handler. If we open this up there, I mean, it's going to be pretty big. You, you can look through it if you want. I'm just going to give you a couple of pointers. There's a function here, handle authenticate async. I'm just going to copy in the name for it just so you can see where it's being called a little bit higher up the chain. But this is the function that is called and it creates your claims principle from the cookie and then returns that claims principle. Finally, also you have handle sign in async right over here and handle sign in async if essentially what it will do is it will use a cookie manager by the end to write the cookie back to the browser. I know some people think that there is some kind of memory session on the server that keeps track of these cookies. There isn't one unless you specify one and the code for that sits here. In your options, when you register cookie authentication, you have to specify an implementation for an iTicket store, which is going to be saving cookie information on the back end. But however, what is actually happening, happening, you as a user, whatever information you had, that is just being cryptographically serialized that just lives on your browser. When you pass that in, the server decrypts it, looks at it, loads you up as the user, and that's it. All the server is doing is decrypting it. And because it can, it can decrypt it. That is the process of also validating that the server is the one who has issued that cookie. So we have copied the method, not so long ago, we're going to go up the class chain, sign in async, sign out the authentication handler, authentication handler. And finally, here we have the I authentication handler. This is where we will have handle authenticate. I don't know why they need to do this, but apparently they do. They will then call handle authenticate async. And then on here, there will be the authenticate async method. 
This authenticate async method is relevant because this is what's being called in the middleware when we're trying to load up the token and use authentication. We're now basically going to try to reach this method from the other side in the authentication middleware. We are going to go through the authentication service. It's going to call authenticate async. This is going to find the handler for the schema that we're trying to authenticate with. And by the way, in the authentication middleware, the schema is being passed here. It's going to basically, by this point, try to use the default authentication schema. Coming back around to the authentication service, when we're trying to authenticate, we grab the handler and then we call the authenticate method. And that is how we reach back into cookie authentication handler. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how these things tie together. If and when you ever need to test authentication and you need to mock some things, perhaps you now know in which bits of the services to look, perhaps which uh, services even to substitute. But this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, if you want to say thank you, leave it in the comment section or come support me on Patreon. Get the source code for all my patrons that are already supporting me. Really big thank you. Your help is very appreciated. Thank you for watching the video and have a good day.